What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we got a very special guest, um, Mr. Larry Lone Star, Mr. Larry Landstar Lone, uh, <laughs> owner of Blue Ribbon Logistics, otherwise known as uh, Blue Ribbon Lunatistics. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you guys don't know, this is uh, my mentor. He changed my way of thinking about trucking. I met him at the Mid America Trucking Show back in 2015. Um, and he mentored me and uh, I put a truck on with him and you know uh, made some, 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 some great business things together I learned so much from him and I hope I'm going to learn a lot more from him in the future So today I want to interview him and uh, hope you guys can learn a thing or two We're going to start off um, with giving him a little of uh, the trucker gauntlet all right, and then uh, he always says he's not a real trucker, but I mean, you know, he's a businessman first, but he got, he's got some trucker in there somewhere, so we're going to pull it out today. All right, here we go. So, Detroit or Commons? Well, Detroit. All right, automatic or manual? Manual for sure. Coffee or energy drink? Coffee for sure. Freightliner or Peterbilt? Freightliner for sure. Petrol or TA? Either one, flip a coin. All right, cool. All right, I think you passed, right? All right, here we go. So. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself um, and how you got into trucking. Well, I was not a trucker. My grandmother wasn't, my mother wasn't. Um, I got into trucking completely by accident. Uh, after ha owning businesses for many, many years, back in 2007, I sold my last one, and I went about a year with really nothing. I didn't know what my next challenge was going to be. Mm -hmm. So I sat around the house and moped around, and I look, I got to do something. Okay. So went to our favorite pizza restaurant, <laughs> sitting there waiting for the food, so we're looking at these employment magazines, you know, and all I see is trucking, truck drivers, truck drivers, and what they make in, and seeing the world, yeah. and all this yeah. stuff, <laughs> all this so stuff I thought, yeah. I, got, I got nothing to do, right. you know, so I started checking into it, and you know me, I had go to, I drove to a couple of different schools, yeah. and uh, just paid for it out of my pocket, got my CDL, and you know, it started out at Transport America as a company mm -hmm. driver. Okay. After about six months, I realized that if I was going to do this, I'm going to do it in my truck because I'm not a really good employee, mm -hmm. you know. So I didn't like people telling me what to do. Right, I was right. a horrible, horrible person in that regard. So <laughs> I started asking them, I look, I, I want to buy a truck. Okay. And I'll bring it on here, but but they're like, no, you got to have one year experience. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they kept telling, every Friday I call this guy. Dude, I want to buy my truck. Right. You don't have a year experience. So after two months, literally, of telling, calling him every Friday, mm -hmm. he goes, you know what? I'm going to make an exception for you. Okay. Buy a truck and bring it on. So I went and bought my truck that you know of, uh -huh. yep. as we call him Metro. Metro it, yep. it's, a, <laughs> it's a 2007 Columbia with a Mercedes engine. Okay. Uh, which, you know, having doing, if I did it over again, I wouldn't have done that. Right. But, it anyway. worked out though. It worked out. Yeah. It worked out. Yeah. And so, you know, I did that for uh, Transport America for a few years. I did a FedEx route up okay. in Indianapolis and made, uh, I did, literally, did, I, did, I did a million dollars in four years. Okay. You know? wow. okay. And uh, so then uh, some things changed with the hours of service. Mm -hmm. And so we had to move the trucks elsewhere because that that opportunity was drying up. Right. And that's how you ended up with Landstar. That's how I ended up with Landstar. Okay. I put okay. one truck on at Landstar to test it. Okay. Put another truck on UPS Freight and this, that, and the other. The Landstar truck by far okay. outperformed all the rest of them. Okay. So I immediately put my truck on, and so we had two. And then as the other obligations were up, we moved, and I had four here. Okay. Okay. And so that's how I got in uh, in trucking. You know, okay. it, it just was one of those things where I thought I got nothing else to do. Right. I might as well try this. You know, I thought when I did it, I'd bring my wife and we'd tour the country. And okay. You know yeah, how that goes. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And of course, that didn't necessarily work out too much as yeah. far as touring the country, but. So uh, tell, tell us, tell us, tell us a little bit about Blue Ribbon Logistics, okay, and and what you guys do there. Well, I uh, after buying my truck, mm -hmm. and uh, you know how you're on the road, you got all this time to think, right. and you know I'm. I'm been a businessman since 1978. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that scares a bunch of you all. <laughs> I'm really not. I, I'm I, well. I, I'm that old. Okay? <laughs> I was going to talk about my follically challenged situation, oh, but, but well, yeah, 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 that's not right. I'm the only guy. <laughs> so I'm, I'm seeing this opportunity because this was, and I've, I've said this before. Right. Of all the businesses I ever did, mm -hmm. this one was the easiest to make money. Okay. Okay. You don't have to go find customers. Mm -hmm. you, you know you. You back up, you get paid. You know, there's no collections and billing and chasing people. Right. Yeah. It was just so easy to make money. I wasn't used to 
you know, with any other business you start, you got to advertise for customers. Yeah. You got to have product. You yeah. got to, you know, this was so easy. Yeah. And 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 you didn't have to find a customer. Mm -hmm. You know, so I thought, well, listen, there is an opportunity here. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I looked at myself and I thought, well, you know, I really don't have a lot of trucking experience, but I got a lot of business experience. Okay. And oddly enough, I found out that most people that are doing this don't have the business experience. Right. Which is why most of them fail. Okay. So I thought, well, I can teach that. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought, well, let's let's start. I'll start adding trucks, mm -hmm. and I'll bring guys on, and I'll teach them how to be successful. Okay. And that worked for a while, but like everybody else, I had trouble finding quality drivers. Right. You know. Okay. Yeah. And so how I met you at the truck yeah. show, that was where I did most of my recruiting. Okay. I would I would sit there and 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 find people mm -hmm. that you know that were looking for an opportunity. I'd explain to them what we do mm -hmm. and it, like I said it worked for a while but I finally got tired of dealing with the regular truck driver, right, you know that mentality yeah. you know yeah. and so I thought well you know this is probably I'm, you know, I'm getting older and I thought right. you know I'm kind of I'm kind of done yeah. you know yeah. I'm gonna check out go home retire yeah and then um, I don't know if you want me to keep going about this but then I, I discovered Chris okay, Polk, okay. Uh, and he rejuvenated my you know my uh, interest in doing this right because he was the right guy okay and it was the right time and so uh, I thought, well, wait, wait a minute. You know, if if I can get him, mm -hmm. there's there's something to, that we there's still hope here. Right. And he already had a podcast that he okay. was doing, much like what you do. Mm -hmm. And so we, uh, I joined in on this podcast, and and that now has become the recruiting wow. arm of what we do. Okay. And now it generates awesome candidates That's awesome. and more than we can handle. Right. You know. Yeah. So I have just the opposite problem that every other right fleet has in the country. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. Long answer. I hope it wasn't. No, no, no. That's that's, that's actually perfect. So, um, if you guys don't know anything about well, you know, Lubrick, he just explained it. But it's like, you you know, you learn how to drive a truck, um, CDL school, college or high school, whatever. If you want to go to college, you go be a part of um, of Larry's Blue Ribbon Logistics program. He'll put you through the program and teach you how to be a successful owner operator. I mean, that's it in a nutshell. There's more to it than that, but he teaches you how to become. You know, you know how to be a truck driver. He's going to teach you how to become a businessman. Okay. And, and, and it works. You know, it's proven time and time again his business model of keeping low overhead um, costs. Right. And, uh, and, and it works. So, earlier I asked you some questions about, you know, Freightliner or, 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 or Peterbilt, isn't that? I already knew the answers. You yeah, know. I know you did. But tell us why you would prefer Detroit over any other engine. All right. Well, it, now's a good time because we know about the part shortage, okay. all this kind of stuff. We, we, use, we like Detroit, older Detroits, because they're easy to get worked on. Okay. Parts are normally easily available, a little bit tighter right now, yeah. but and they're just reliable, very reliable engines. You don't have part three gens all over the place, you know. Right, yeah. You, we can we can get them worked on at any TA and Petro mm -hmm. in the country because they're Freightliner service points. Mm -hmm. We don't have to go to a dealership and wait in the park in the in the waiting room for days to get looked at. Right. Okay. So it's just it's it's reliable. It's 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 cheap to operate, low operating cost, um, and and so it, it just the thing. The the thing we're trying to do at Blue Ribbon is lower the, the risk, okay. minimize the risk. So by that's the, the least risky engine mm -hmm. that was ever made. Okay. Now the Cummins thing, I, the Cummins was the N14, mm -hmm. and and that that that's a very reliable engine. Okay. The problem is you still don't have that. The, you don't have the TA Petro right. network, okay? Right, right. And and you have more service points for de for a, a Detroit than you do a Cummins. Okay. And the other thing is my network that mm -hmm. I built was Detroit based. Oh, okay. And so I mean I get guys that call me now and they've got a different kind of engine, like Volvo. Mm -hmm. Okay. We were taking Volvos with Detroit Motors, ninety nine through oh one. Okay. We've got a guy in our program now that is a Volvo guy. Okay. He's he's saying the D twelves he can make those just as reliable as our pre-emission Detroit's. Okay. So we've got his truck. Okay. So if that proves out to be the case, then we expand our horizon a little bit. Mm -hmm. But what we what we don't want to do is outkick our coverage right. and not have and not have the network to support okay. you know the uh, the equipment that we choose to be operate. So. Okay. And so why Freightliner over any other brand? I know that I know that everything you do is looking at the ba the bottom line, not like a truck driver. Oh, I like Peterbilt and I yeah, like Kenworth. Yeah. You, you you want 
Freightliner because of the bottom line. It, it's, it, it's the lowest price to try. Okay. I mean, okay. I, I'll admit, it's not, look, most owner operators want this luxury. Right. I get that. Yeah. But you have to understand, our market is the first time owner operator buying the first truck. Okay. Nine out of ten of those guys will fail. Okay. Okay. Nine out of ten of those guys will fail. Yeah. You're a military guy. Right. Yeah. Go across this street right here, but only nine, only one out of ten is going to make it to the other side because yeah. they're only going to get a landmine. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. Now, if a recruiter told you that, you probably wouldn't go do that. But yet, every day, thousands of people do this, and nine out of ten are going to fail. Right. So the Freightliner is the least expensive. Okay. All right. It's a starter truck. I'm not saying that you need to go do this and forever and ever and ever. Right. Right. But this is a starter truck. Okay. All right. It's easy. It's a low cost to get into. Mm -hmm. Low risk, low maintenance cost. We can also improve the fuel mileage on all of them because mm -hmm. we don't have the restrictions of the DPF. Okay. Even the EGR Detroits, we can work with those now. Okay. Uh, and okay. so we've got a chance to improve the fuel mileage with modifications that we can do legally. Okay. And uh, it's another thing, I don't do the deletions right. because I don't want to run illegal. Learned the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because you know, I've got guys whose livelihood depends on me. Right, yeah. What would it look for me if a guy gets pulled over in New Jersey and they put the thing up to tailpipe and it's a deleted motor? Right, yeah. Well, now, now how do I look with that? So right? Basically, oh, you also said ma manual over automatic. Yeah. Uh, now, and this is, this is most old school truckers, and like I said, he doesn't consider himself a trucker, so he doesn't have that old school trucker mentality, oh, well, I've got to have a 13-speed, 18-speed, whatever. His reasoning for choosing manual over automatic, again, is because of the bottom line. Could you talk about that a little bit? Absolutely, it's the same thing. It's yeah. you know, automatics are more expensive to work on. Mm -hmm. They're problematic. You know, you, if with a manual transmission, about the worst going to happen is you might lose a clutch. Right. Okay. But we've got many cases where you can't get out of a dock because right. an automatic won't work. Yeah. Or there, and again, it's just, it's just lowering, uh, raising the reliability, mm -hmm. lowering the, the the risk, and it's much cheaper. Look, most manual transmissions go a million miles. Mm -hmm. You might put a clutch in. Yeah. Okay. But the trans. I, I have got many trucks that are 07 and older that have the original transmissions. Okay. With the, with the automatics, especially in that year range, right. they're not really as reliable as they are today. Okay. Now again, I'm not saying that you can't have an automatic, mm -hmm. but if you're out here buying your first truck right. and you're a new owner operator, that's probably not the thing to do because okay. it's going to cost you more to keep that automatic working. Okay. And when it lets you when it goes when it goes bad, it goes bad, yeah. you know. Yeah. So. Okay. All right, so um, describe real, real very quickly a a blue ribbon logistics or, a, or what they call a lunatics uh, truck. Well, it's I know you don't want to give away all the secrets, but no, 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 we give away all the time. <laughs> yeah, you do. It's an it's a originally it was an 03 and older. Okay. Twelve point seven series sixty Detroit. Okay. Usually in a Freightliner, okay. but in that that back then. Been in a Peterbilt, right? So I did that. I don't care so much about the brand of the truck, right? We want that motor, that motor. Okay. Now, you know, we don't make those anymore. Mm -hmm. So as they got more and more hard to find, we expanded up to 2007. Okay. Because from 04 to 07, it's EGR, and mm -hmm. a lot of people think that's not emissions. It right. is, right. right? But it's not DPF. It'd be DPF, right? So we can still. Uh, not modify, but we can keep the EGR clean okay. and keep it functional and working legally without deleting it. Right. So it gives us up to 07 now okay. to work from. 08 is where DPF came comes okay. in. Now we can't do anything after the turbo. Okay. Legally. Right. Okay. Right. So that's our that's our 07 and older. Detroit 12.7 or 14 liter, okay. either one, because when it goes to EGR, it goes to 14 liter okay. usually. And and again, only because reliability, right. fuel mileage, low cost of operation. You know, here's an example. Right now, fuel is five something of that gallon. Okay. Right. Yeah. Our fuel surcharge at Landstar last week was 69 cents. Okay. All but my trucks, but one, and this guy is a new new driver. Right. Their fuel cost was under 69 cents a gallon, a mile, a mile. You bought 11 cents a gallon. We we made money right. on fuel. So okay. Instead, of, okay. everybody's yeah. bitching about fuel. Yeah. We may. I hope it goes to ten dollars a gallon. Oh, yeah. I know that pisses a lot off, but <laughs> but if you run your risk business right and mm -hmm. you understand fuel surcharge, mm -hmm. we're making money. When back when I was driving that when I was doing FedEx, mm -hmm. I was getting 9.2 miles per gallon. Oh wow. My fuel was free. My fuel cost me nothing. Wow. And so, but that, but that 
but all that's because of the way we spec the truck. Mm -hmm. And we haven't talked about specs, but you can't just buy, all trucks aren't created equal. Right, absolutely. You've got, you know, this this uh, sweet spot on this Detroit's about 1325 okay. at 60 miles an hour. Okay. So if your rear end ratio is so high that you're at 1500 mm -hmm. or 1600 RPM, you're not going to get fuel mileage right, there. Right, right. So you have, it's not just the truck, but it has to be specced properly. Okay. And the way you do that, you got to know the rear end ratio, you got to know the transmission model number so we can get the final drive ratio, mm -hmm. and then we got to know the tire size. Okay. And with those three numbers, I can tell you exactly what your fuel mileage can be mm -hmm. if you drive that right, truck right, and spec it properly and do the modifications. Okay. So, all right. So, right now, you guys are about 10 trucks, right? Uh, 13 trucks. Thir 13 trucks. With three more waiting to come Three on. more on the way. And, and kind of walk through the process. Some you own, some are uh, guys that, that are leasing to you, um, and, and you have like three or four different programs going on. We kind do. of Kind of like, you know, just kind of give an overview of those three or four programs. Okay. And then from here, what is the future okay. of Blue Ribbon Logistics? Well, first of all, some of this was totally unexpected. Okay. You know, we, we knew we were going to do this teaching program and mm -hmm. put a guy in a truck for a while and have him graduate out. At, at one time, we were selling our trucks to the drivers, okay. but they got to be so hard to find that we kind of quit doing that because right. we'd sell it to the driver, then we couldn't buy another truck, right. then we couldn't ha hire another driver, right. you know. So we quit doing that. So now what we do is at the end of the program, the training program where they work for us, mm -hmm. we help them find a truck. Okay. And then part of it is we, as you know, we're a Dave Ramsey type organization. Right. We insist that you pay cash for the truck. Okay. So while they're finding the truck, they're still saving money. Okay. So that way they can go out here and stroke a check and they don't have the, the pressure of a truck payment every week. You okay. Know? So um, so we, we've got the, the, the most common way that people participate in our program is that they come to work for us as W-2 mm -hmm. company drivers Okay, <clears throat> and they drive our equipment and we teach them trans we call it wax on wax off okay you know and we teach them what to do by just doing it right you know they don't know they're learning but they're learning right mm -hmm. and after you know a year and a half of that they know you know so now they're now if they're financially ready mm -hmm. they're ready from the training standpoint they're ready to go become a bco at landstar okay and they're not going to be a statistic right they've done it they've they've done everything they whatever mistake they made they made in my truck Okay. You know, and I have a little sweet conversation with right, them. Right. We're not yeah, going to yeah. do that again, yeah, yeah. are we? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's the most common way. Okay. Another way is people that are that are already BCOs at Landstar mm -hmm. but are struggling. Right. You know, because forty percent of Landstar BCOs don't make it through right. the first year. Right. So we have a mentoring program. Mm -hmm. So you can sign up with us. We'll dispatch you. 90 day increments mm -hmm. and that way we raise your revenue up and get you making money while you're struggling then i do the business coaching okay chris my dispatcher does the dispatching okay, okay? i do the business coaching because a lot of these guys don't know their numbers right. they don't know what cost per mile is they don't know what their fuel mileage is all these things that are going to put them out of business mm -hmm. eventually right uh, when the money runs out right. you know and so and of course I, they've already bought the truck i can't really that's done right so we just make the best of a bad situation there okay. most of the time and so so they there it's a it's a three month uh, intervals of dispatching that you can re-up for okay. and then it's a six month um, uh, the coaching is a six month period of time okay. which you can renew for as well okay and the last thing we do is most people don't have don't, they're not keeping their own books right they don't really have a good accountant so we offer a bookkeeping service where we can teach you how to do it mm -hmm. or we'll do it for you okay you know okay so now the third way which has happened as just a it has just evolved. Right. Is that you can buy a truck mm -hmm. and instead of putting it on directly to Landstar, you can put it on our fleet. You're the owner, right? But you put it on my fleet mm -hmm. so that it comes through my settlement. You're an employee of mine driving your truck. Oh. So you're okay. getting paid as a driver. Mm -hmm. You're getting paid as a truck owner. Hmm. Now we're splitting some of that drive that that truck owner pay. Right. right. You know because but, but you're not paying any fees right. for any coaching. Okay. That's the most immersion way of doing this. If you already own a truck. Okay. If you don't own a truck, don't buy a truck. Right. Come here and drive ours. Okay. You know. Okay. So those are the three ways that you can be in a program. Okay. So. And what do you see you guys uh, doing from, what, what is the future for, for long term? Well, um, here, <coughs> here, <coughs> excuse me, here's our pinch point, Niven. Um, we, the podcast generates all the drivers we can handle. Okay. Okay. We, we're so selective, you know, and it's not, I don't want to sound sobby about that, right, right. but this is a, 
This is like a deployment. You don't understand yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. This is a year and a half deployment. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand that concept, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 it's going to take a commitment to do this. Right. Because you're getting a uh, you're getting a master's degree in business in a year and a half. Right. While you're doing a full time job driving you're a truck, making over a hundred thousand dollars a year, by the way, for right. us. None of our guys make less than a hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay. So, but it's because we. Push them to right. Yeah, we're we're a high performance company. Right, all okay? high performance company. Right. So, um, but now we respect home time and all that kind of stuff. Right. You know, but but you have to understand there is a correlation between being home and making money. Because mm -hmm. the truck's not running home. Yep. You know where you live has a lot to do to do with that. Because if you can go home under a load, you're still making money. Right. But right. if you have to empty out to go home, and then we got to get you back on freight, right. that's where the problem comes okay. in. Okay. Okay. So um, the future. So we we the driver knock on wood. Right. The podcast. He's producing driver candidates. Okay. We now have uh, uh, a lot of truck owners mm -hmm. who can't keep drivers, mm -hmm. and so they're interested now in us taking their trucks. So that doesn't seem to be going to stop. Right. It's going to continue to grow. Right. The pinch point is our fleet, ma our fleet managers, our okay. dispatchers. Okay. A, di a good dispatcher can only handle about 10 or less trucks okay. in, in our system. Okay. Okay? okay. Five for a beginner, right. a guy like Chris, 10. We had to produce, so I can't hire those guys. Right. Our system won't work if I bring in some college snot and say, here, do this. That you won't work here. Within. They have to understand what we do. Okay. And so we have to grow those. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got our second one, Seth. You met him last night. You know, so th that's our pinch point. How quickly and, and, and how good, uh, and we've got lots of people who want to do it, okay. but it takes time to get there. Right. They're learning how to be an owner operator. Absolutely, yeah. Now we got to teach you how to become a fleet owner right. and run a fleet. So that's the pinch point. Okay. So the growth is unlimited as long as we can continue to produce okay. dispatchers. All and right. I use that word, you know, most guys think dispatchers are, right, you know, right. but for, it's, 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 for us, we're people people, right. you know, yeah. it's, it's not so much dispatching, it's making sure you're getting home, making sure you're, make, you know, we want you to make money. Right, absolutely. We're all about yeah. that. Yeah. So we want to make sure that you're on track to make over $100,000 a year, you know. Mm -hmm. So as a company driver with zero risk. Okay. You know. All right. So tell us how to, tell the uh, viewers how to contact uh, Blue Ribbon Logistics and maybe become a part of one of your programs. Well, the easiest way is www.blueribbonlogistics.com. That's our website. Okay. Uh, there's a little bit about us there. Quite honestly, we've got so much people, so many people that come to us we probably don't have the best website that we okay. could have, but we don't depend on that. Yeah. It's the communication link. Okay. There's a form there that you can submit mm -hmm. that comes straight to my desk. Okay. And Chris and I will go over it. We'll reach back out to you and we'll set up a Zoom interview. Mm -hmm. And that will be our, the first step into the program. Okay. okay. The other way, of course, we have the podcast. You know, we really prefer before you... The, the form mm -hmm. that you spend a little time in the podcast understanding our philosophy because right. what we do here is drastically different they call us lunatics for right. a reason yeah. okay so we've got a podcast blue yes mm -hmm. any youtube any any mm -hmm. and i would recommend uh, episode 49 is where blue ribbon starts okay before that it was chris okay, okay. so 49 start there as far go go at least ten episodes, okay. and you'll get the the basics of what we do here. Right. We have a hundred and six episodes, okay. so yep. plenty to choose from. I've watched them all, but at least do forty nine while mm -hmm. and that will introduce you you know our average podcast is probably an hour and a half okay yep. so you're taking it 10 12 15 hours of, of time but that will really give you the fundament when you eat re when we reach out to you for the zoom interview you'll be asking the right questions right absolutely okay. so that's the other way and I guess we do have a Facebook page blue ribbon on Facebook blue and, and, and of course it's Larry at blue ribbon logistics.com okay my email and um, and uh, and we're all of our information is on those the website of the page. You can get my phone number. You can get my email. So uh, I do answer the phone. Okay. Yeah, so well, I really appreciate you. Uh, you know, being here with us today. Uh, I think your information that you're giving is very valuable. I believe in what you do, Thank and uh, I think it's going to continue to grow. And uh, I, I, for one, I really appreciate it, and I'm glad I got a chance to meet you. And hopefully, our mentorship or your mentorship to me will continue. You know, what I'm saying for a long time. Well, right. the feeling is mutual, sir. Thank you very much. Good luck with you and your program. Oh, thank you very much. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. You guys already knew the deal. Uh, fast trucks, fast food, and fast women will get you in trouble. Hard times don't last. Hard truckers do. It's not about how much you make; it's about how much you keep. And last but not least, stay smooth, my friends. All right, thank, thank you. Man.